at this time, I'm so excited to begin our plenary live keynote session by introducing you to my dear friend, Dr. Ku Hinahina Ku Ikahakai Kahakalau. She's a resident of Hamaku on Hawaii Island and CEO of Ku Wakanaka, a Native Hawaiian social enterprise. Dr. Ku is a Native Hawaiian educator, researcher, cultural practitioner, grassroots activist, songwriter, and expert in Hawaiian language, history, and culture. A resident of Hawaii Island, Dr. Kahakalau, is the first person in the world to earn a PhD in Indigenous education. Dr. Kahakalau's research in Hawaiian education, which spans over 30 years, has resulted in the incubation of a highly successful pedagogy of aloha which promotes the revitalization of Hawaiian values along with our language and culture, hands-on learning in the environment, community sustainability, food sovereignty, and Hawaiian self-determination in education and beyond. Her latest efforts center around developing Ea Ecoversity, a Hawaiian-focused post-secondary program designed to transition Hawaiian youth to culturally grounded, happy, successful, thriving, responsible global citizens able to walk comfortably in multiple worlds. Ea, which stands for Education with Aloha, also means sovereignty in Hawaiian. Since Ea Ecoversity is envisioned to become a valuable component of an independent Hawaiian system of education. Ku ha'aheo, I'm so proud to introduce our opening keynote speaker, Dr. Ku Kahakalau. Aloha e ku. Aloha nui e kanani. Aloha nui e na po e ho alohe mai mai ka piina kala i ha e ha e ai ka mole olu ole hua. Um, we're going to do something a little bit different today, and uh, if you can see my slide deck. Um, I'd like you to type into your browser joinpd.com and then the password SHMNRD and that will get you to a paradigm slide that will allow you to participate as I am doing my presentation. Um, I'm still only seeing Kanani on my slide, so I hope everybody can see um, and connect. Again, go to your browser and you won't get kicked out of where you are right now. Just put in joinpd.com and then the password is SHMNRD. Um, that password will be on the top, on, the, on every single screen on the top right. So um, you can join later on too. If you don't go there, it's not a problem either because you will still see all the slides. You just won't be able to participate. And I do want as many of you to participate. I got 50 people already. All right, you're coming in, coming in, coming in. I got 80, woo hoo hoo, my guy 90. All right, uh, over 100 are in the, in the uh, deck already. Now we have almost 150, there we go. So wonderful, you know what to do. It'll be also in the chat, so let's get started. My Kailoa. So you should all be able to see my screen right now. And then on the top right there, you see the password just in case. My Kai. Aloha, my Kako. Aloha, Aloha, Nakua. Aloha, Naumakua. Aloha, Nalio Hawaii. Aloha, Nakupuna. Aloha, Namakua. Aloha e kale hule hu. Aloha e ye. Aloha mai kako, mai kapina kala e ha e ha e a e ka mole olu ole hua. O wau o ku hina hina ku i kahaka i kahakalau. O Daniela kikino kahakalau ke kane, o ke ao o kupele kawahine. No hopu lawa hana o William ki ahonui kahakalau. William ki ahonui kahakalau ki kane. O Irene Doe kawahine. No hopu lawa hana o Robert kahakalau. O Robert kahakalau ki kane. O Frida Schmidt kawahine. No hopu lawa hana o ku hina hina kui kahakai kahakalau. O wau no o ku. 
o Honolulu, ku u o ne hānau, o Hawaii, ku u Mokupuni, o Kilauea, ku u Mauna, o Makua, ku u Kai, a o Waipio, ku u Awama. E a ku u Mau Makua, ku u Makua Hine, he Kelemania oia, a me ku u Makua Kane, he Hawaii oia. A ea no hoi ku u ohana aloha nui ia ku u kāne o nga lei, ku u mau kei kamahine, ku u mau mo opuna, ku u kai kuahine, a me kai kaina, a me ku u kai kunane ki kahi. A ea ki kahi o ku u mau kumo he wai wai no la ko. So, first question on your pair deck. How are you feeling? Did you get it? Everything pretty much? Or didn't maybe not understood everything but got the idea, or are you totally lost? Let's see, I got 115 responses. And what are they saying? All right, well, there is a few people that are still trying to figure it out. Majority of you are either on the awesome, I got it, or on the I'm okay, uh, I didn't understand everything, but I got the idea. And some of you are still moving around. There's a few that are kind of in the help. I'm totally lost, but that's all right. The majority of you definitely on the number one and on the number two. And the rest of you, I think you're still working on, on moving your dots, which is all right. Getting less and less totally lost, which is awesome. Out of three, almost 300 responses, um, I have like three or four that are totally lost. And the rest is all either at a kahi, or an ilua, number one or number two, which is just absolutely awesome. What that really means is, hulo, 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 pai pai lima kako. Why? Because pretty much all of us are Hawaiian language speakers. We're somewhere between a two and a four on this ana olelo, or Hawaiian language proficiency scale that I developed a while back. And that's awesome because this month, as you may know, we are celebrating Mahina Olelo Hawaii. And the idea is that we need to really celebrate, as was mentioned earlier, because we have come so far. If I did this poll 10 years ago or 20 years ago or 30 years ago, we would have had a completely different set of data. But today we can celebrate because the majority of us are somewhere between the twos and the fours on this Hawaiian language proficiency scale. Our topic today is Navai Wai Kupuna. And I would like to ask you folks, what do you cherish as a Wai Wai Kupuna? Just put one answer into your responses. Give me one Wai Wai Kupuna, one ancestral treasure that you really cherish. That's just something that, that you are just so happy and proud about, something that you uh, treasure. And what do we have? We have mele kuuna, wisdom, olelo, mo'olelo, iki kupuna, ohana, mai kai mo'olelo, lots of mo'olelos, ohana, um, keiki mo'olelo, lots of mo'olelo, may I? I'm with you there. Uh, iki kupuna, iki oka'aina, me kawai, mai kai loa. So there's lots and lots and lots of responses. Mahalo nui for continuing to put those in. So we, there are so many things that we treasure that have been passed down to our kupuna, from our kupuna to us. For me, one of the Wai Wai kupuna that I really, really treasure is the Hawaiian ways of education, our traditional methods, our ways of teaching and learning, our ancient way of instruction, our ancient curriculum, and our ancient assessment practices. And that's kind of in a way, what we want to focus on today. So my question to you, true or false, is there ample evidence that traditional Hawaiian education worked, right? We, we don't want to be doing something that didn't work in the first place. So true or false, did Hawaii, traditional Hawaiian education work in the past? Yes or no, true or false? What do we have? We have 130, uh, 140 responses, and so far only one false, and the rest are all trues, 178 trues, 180 something, we're up to 190 trues, still only one false. I don't know who you are, that's a good thing in this pair deck. We don't know who you are, which is perfectly fine. 250 trues and two false, so that's pretty good, I'll take it. Um, 
I believe we have lots of evidence. And when we look at it, uh, my master's was on the view of the early Germans that came to Hawaii before 1820 and compared that with native sources. And the Germans definitely said that when they arrived in Hawaii, again, prior to the coming of the missionaries, they found a, they found thriving, self-sufficient societies on every island. They found exceptional general health and welfare, an abundance of food and water and happiness. They talk about hearing laughter wherever they go, this concept of lea lea, having a good time, uh, enjoying ourselves. You know, when we first started this movement and we, we had a Hawaiian academy at Honoka High School, our biggest criticism was we were laughing too much. They said, oh, your kids can't be learning. And I said, why? They said, well, every time we go by your room, they're always laughing. Definitely a product of Hawaiian traditional education. In addition, because of this type of traditional education, our art flourished. We didn't really have a word for art yet. Everything that we made was a piece of art. Our tapa was the finest, most strongest watermark lace as beautiful in the front as in the back, featherwork lauded as the most exquisite art form that they had ever seen anywhere around the world. And they literally went around the world multiple times. And hula was described as being an art form so much more beautiful than ballet. Our kupuna, as a result of traditional Hawaiian education, also developed a highly sophisticated oral language. Our kupuna were superlative orators, extremely poetic communication, continuously using metaphors, primarily around nature. So we would be comparing ourselves to taro, for example. We have dozens of olelo no'eau that compare kanaka and kalo. Um, Kauna, hidden meaning, playing with that multiple hidden meanings, uh, not just in cosmogonic genealogies, but also in just a chat that said, hey, how are you? Come inside. I, I'm so happy to see you kind of thing. Advanced riddling skills and contrary to everybody else that primarily only communicated with the spiritual world through chants, Hawaiians also communicated with the aina, with the environment and with each other through chance. So no doubt, um, uh, Hawaiian traditional education worked. More importantly, it allowed us to be 100% sustainable and independent. We had this ancestral connection to the land, a collective kuleana to malama the aina. We had developed expert land use practices and propagation and fishing practices that allowed for the protection of our resources and a reciprocal sharing where everybody had everything they needed. It was basically an effort to be porno. And the way Mary Kawina Pukui translates porno when she talks about um, the in, in the Mavai Vai ceremony, she says, porno is honor and responsibility. And so that was our standard that was set as a result of traditional Hawaiian education. Now, where can you find out about that? If you're interested in Hawaiian education, I highly recommend you to go to the Bishop Museum Press. And for only $19.95, I don't get paid for this, but I'm highly recommending you to get this book, or let know it out, download it on your phone so you have it with you all the time, because this is the primary source when it comes to traditional education, but also traditional philosophy, traditional way of life, to traditional epistemology, whatever you want to know about our kupuna, Olelo Noeau will help you to find it. My One of my favorite Olelo Noeau is Waola Loko Ikealoha. Waola Loko Ikealoha. Love is life within. In other words, love is imperative to one's mental and physical welfare. You know, the last 10 years, all of a sudden, this word socio-emotional learning came up as if we never heard about that before. Hui, Okupuna knew about this thousands of years ago. They said, Uaola loko ike aloha. They recognized that without that aloha, we cannot grow socially and emotionally or physically for that matter. Um, so when we look at traditional Hawaiian education, A, no doubt that it worked because we have the evidence of that. And then when we try to figure out what it is, it's basically cultural based, 
the social emotional focus that I just talked about. It's informal, it was personalized, relevant, place-based, project-based, values-based, and our performance-based assessment made sure that it validated the rigor of this type of education. Now, when you look at all of those words, you go, hmm, isn't that also what modern education is supposed to be about? Personalized, relevant, place-based, values-based, rigorous. So when it comes to traditional Hawaiian education or education in general, we can truly say ancient is modern. Now, 1778, Western contact brings lots of changes and interrupts this traditional way of learning. We have major changes that affect our health, our quality of life, our cultural practices, our religion, our land tenure, as I mentioned, our education, but also our political structure and our language. Yet, we didn't just disappear. We um, so um, what I want you to answer now is, in your opinion, by 1860, were Hawaiians among the top three educated people in the world? So we know 1778, we have this ma massive change. And now I'm stating that by 1860, we have pivoted uh, in a way that took us to the top of education in the world. So what do you guys think about that? I have 150 responses and there's one or two disagrees, but the majority of you are definitely agreeing um, that that is true. And sure enough, out, out of the 200, yep, most of you moving your dots. I think some of you are just getting ma'a to moving your dots, but they're coming and they're all going towards the agree one, except for two guys that are still, must be the same two guys. No, I'm just joking. It's, it's all right. It's okay to disagree. And now we have one more just for that. Ole Pilikia, Mai Kailoa. So here is the answer. In 1840, Kawi established the first public school system west of the Rockies. And they're going like, wow, that was something. But that wasn't, that was something west of the Rockies for all its worth. But was, what was more important is that this is one of the first free Manuahi public education systems in the entire world. And one of the few, again, that's open to both boys and girls, and one that integrates the language and the culture into the Western education. So we don't throw all of that away, we integrate it. So we are on the forefront of education in 1840, and by when, when uh, Kawikiauli's reign ends in 1854, Hawaii is one of the most literate nations in the world. That is also substantiated by Laura Fitch, Fish Judd, who is the wife of missionary Dr. Jared Judd. And she writes about literacy uh, in Hawaii. The proportion is estimated as greater than in any country in the world, except for Scotland and England. So truly, uh, by 1860, we are among the top three educated nations in the world. So now let me back up a little bit and talk just a little bit about who I am and what I've been doing for the last 35 years, which is contributing to a Hawaiian system of education as Kanani talked about. I've done research on multiple islands with tens of thousands of learners, public, cho public school students, charter private school students, multi-age community education in the classroom and in the environment, uh, from early childhood all the way to the graduate level. My doctoral dissertation is on, on this subject. I've, I've written multiple publications and I've done over a thousand presentations on six continents about this concept of Hawaiian education. Let me tell you that my story a little bit more. So, in 1985, I got my bachelor's in education and my PD, my professional diploma in secondary Hawaiian language. And I became one of the first licensed DOE Hawaiian language teachers. And I thought, cool, now I can teach the language to, the, to my students. And then they, we're going to all learn how to speak Hawaiian and everything is going to be fine. Well, I noticed that there were some issues with that. Already in 1981, the first really big assessment on native Hawaiian um, 
state uh, Native Hawaiian educational achievement was done by the Kamehameha schools in the Native Hawaiian education assessment. And that assessment clearly showed that Hawaiians scored below parity in education and that these low achievement levels were directly related to cultural factors. So we go from 1860s, top three in the world, 1890s, still top three in the world. Now we are 100 years later and we are below parity. Not even same, but below parity. And it has to do with uh, cultural factors. So in 1988, as a result of this Native Hawaiian Education Assessment, we, we the Native Hawaiian Education Act, it's passed, but unfortunately it didn't have that much impact because it was not a collaborative effort. It vied and it still vies Hawaiian organizations against one another instead of us all working together. Yet today you will hear from many people that have used this funding to create programs that are just absolutely awesome. It just hasn't had that systemic impact yet. As I was learning more about Hawaiian education and officially became a Hawaiian researcher, it took me really long to have the, the guts to say I'm a Hawaiian researcher because I thought you had to be really smart to be a Hawaiian researcher. Um, and I started my PhD in Indigenous education in 1996. It became more and more evident and and I realized more and more that the ship that I was on was going down. And so I had to do something. Well, in 2000, I saw these planks floating on the ocean. I said, hey, I better get off this ship because it's clearly going down. Let's see if this, if we can make these planks seaworthy. And so we jumped off, not just myself, but 12 other Hawaiian communities on three islands. And we started this Hawaiian focused charter school movement and watched the evolution of this pedagogy of aloha while we were doing what the Hawaiians call hoe ka 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 hoe hoe ka, ka paddling, bailing, paddling, bailing, uh, trying to keep above water. In uh, and this pedagogy of aloha, over the years we were able to reduce it to a simple formula, and the formula says that if you cultivate strong familial relations of care of aloha and you make sure that the curriculum is relevant, that it is something that makes sense to the students, and you make sure that they understand their kuleana to the teachings, to, the, to, to what they have learned about anything really, then you're automatically going to end up with rigor, and this rigor is going to be both contemporary and traditional rigor. I don't like the words academic and cultural rigor because that clearly states that academic rigor is more important than cultural rigor. But I like contemporary and traditional rigor because both of them um, are important. We need to have the skills to function in the 21st century, but we also need to have our traditional skills that will keep us Hawaiian forever. And if you do it right, if you make sure you have strong relations, if you make sure your curriculum is relevant, if you make sure your st students understand their kuleana to their learning, you will not only have rigor, but you should also have fun in the process. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about this today because I've been talking about this for 30 years. And frankly, the people that you will hear today, they will be showing you how they are living this pedagogy of Aloha. They may not call it that, but it, they're practicing it. And that includes my daughter, Iini, who will be in a breakout session after this one, um, that will actually show you the outcome of this pedagogy of Aloha. What I do want to do is quote my husband, who says that when students feel safe, when they feel like people around them care for them and want the best, they're going to open up and they're going to blossom. It may take a little while, but they will blossom. And next thing you know, their brilliance shines brightly and they blow your mind with their creativity, their wit, and their ability to produce quality products and take care of their kuleana. So 10 years on these planks, we pick up another log and we make a, a, a something something. We pick up some some um lauhala floating around and we build a sail it's still all a little bit not so happening but after 10 years our school kanoka aina is fully accredited 
receives a six-year accreditation the first time we go for accreditation, which is unheard of. And it's not just a WASP accreditation, but it's a WASP HAIS accreditation, which means we have the same standard and level of accreditation as Punahou, Kamehameha, Iolani, etc. We have also by then built Hawaii's first platinum lead educational facility. So basically what we have learned is we have learned how to sail, right? Otherwise we wouldn't have gotten no six year accreditation. And we have learned how to build canoes. In our case, it's a platinum lead green facility. So we know how to sail and we know how to build canoes after 10 years of this movement. And that's really all I wanted to prove as part of this movement. When I leave Kanokain in 2010, we have all this research that's done by Kamehameha, and I really want to mahalo Sean Kanaeaupuni and her teams for doing this research that says that a strong sense of aloha and ohana fosters caring and supportive relationships. That's what they say is the impact of education with aloha, and that this integration of aloha and other values cultivates virtuous behaviors, environmental stewardship, and civic responsibility among future leaders. They also say that it positively affects math and reading scores, particularly for students with low social emotional development, and enhances their well-being, uh, including their self-efficacy and their social relationships. It also results in greater Hawaiian cultural affiliation, civic engagement, and school motivation, and encourages them to put cultural skills to use in their communities. And in 2019, when we had the Mauna happening, so many of our graduates were out there putting their cultural skills to use in their communities, and they're still putting their cultural skills to, to use in their communities today. The study also showed that it engages the students and results in both cultural and academic rigor. That's how they put it then. As I said, I would say contemporary and traditional rigor. And it focuses on sustainability uh, by enhancing personal family well-being and empowerment and economic viability of Hawaiian communities by providing jobs and resources. So after 10 years, all of this through Hawaiian culture-based education, through pedagogy of aloha. Yet, when we look at the ship, remember the ship? Still yet, long-standing achievement gap of Native Hawaiians. And according to this study, it's a significant concern, right? We, haven't, we have done a little bit with a small group here that, that's been on these planks, but the ship is still going down. And today, still yet, we have over 50,000 Native Hawaiian students, the largest ethnic population within the DOE, and collectively, we're the most under and uneducated major ethnic group. We have the highest negative performance indicators and the lowest positive performance indicators. And I could give you data after data, but I don't have time, so you just have to believe me, or you can look and find out yourself. And so the only thing that we can call that is institutionalized racism. And that's a tough word, right? We don't want to be racist, and we don't want to accuse anybody else of being racist. But in this case, we really have to, uh, we have to come to this realization that this racism is so deeply embedded in our culture that those who are continue to benefit from this powerful system of privilege that's built on race either don't want to see it or it's going to take them a while, right? We need to talk about it, but it's not being talked about. According to my friend Robin Hughes, um, if we think about it first, and if we truly want to end racism, then we have to recognize that we have a problem and we have to start talking about it. And that's what I'm here today up to talk to you folks about is, let's start talking about it. So my first question to you is, do you agree that institutionalized racism exists in Hawaii and that it's impacting tens of thousands of Hawaiian school children. Again, I don't know who you are, so you can answer this question honestly. Um, and 
Um, we do have uh, one or two that are in a disagree uh, place. Um, and again, it's that's your prerogative. Uh, but I'm seeing more and more of the dots. So we have about 150 dots right now that do agree with me that institutionalized racism exists in Hawaii and that it is impacting tens of thousands of Hawaiian school children. I have over 200 responses right now and three disagrees out of those. And so we got to talk about it. My good friend Skippy Ioane has been saying it for a while. He's saying our children are the evidence. They're not the crime, right? Our children are not the ones who are failing. It's the system that is failing them. And that's also what my other really good friend, Dr. Manulari Maya agrees with. Based on the data that we have, this lower educational achievement of Native Hawaiians is not our problem. It's not like we're more stupid than the rest of the uh, children that, that are in the DOE. It's a reflection of the incompatibility of the current education system with our Native Hawaiian cultural and educational propensities and preferences. So we are, as Skippy says, we are not the crime. We're the evidence of a system that is perpetuating institutionalized racism. I did a talk to some teachers uh, in YNI last week, and uh, Loke Wakine Kona, a really dear friend of mine, also uh, emailed me and said, makes me mad to think the answers are right there in the Ike of Aokupuna, and the powers that be won't listen. Awe. And so I'm asking you, what can you do to help make them listen? Because we have to make them listen. We, we have the answers. Now we have to have the powers to be listen and do something about it. So can you give me some responses of what should we do or what will you do, even more importantly, to make them listen? Present it to the governor, come up with a solution and present it to the governor make myself accessible, write letters, talk story of experience that children have had endured within the system. Huli, you have turned things around. Be the example, my kai, some don't know, more educational opportunities, teach porno, vote porno, my kai. Do research that highlights our Ike, all good stuff. Speak out, let your voice be heard, my kai. Create opportunities for conversations. Speak up so they can hear us, my kai. This is the legislative session now. Speak up so they can hear us. There's lots of issues re, um, affecting Hawaiians in the legislature. Lead by example. If they see how it works for me, you, our children, our communities, then they may be doing something. Join together. We need to be in. Uh, they need to be invested and have a true understanding of our situation and circumstances. My kai. Awesome, awesome. Make the curriculum relevant. My kai. Teach my children how truly loved they are. They're not the crime, they're the evidence. My kai loa. Continue to ask for the return of HCBE across the curriculum to the Hawaii DOE. So lots and lots of super, super awesome responses. Mahalo nui. And keep thinking about that. What can you do? If we know institutionalized racism exists, and if all we need to do is get them to listen, what can we individually and collectively do so that they will listen, so that we will affect change? And so now we have arrived at 2020, our, our little, I, I'll, I'll call it a mea. It's not a real va'a, right? But, but we know how to build a va'a, but what we're sailing on is, is still not it. But we have arrived and we are seeing this island. It's 2020, COVID has happened, and it's, as Wai Ale Ale mentioned and in her introduction, this is the opportunity now for systemic change. We look at Mauka and we see this awesome core forest and we go, yee, doggy, we now have the resources. We just gotta go up Mauka, we gotta cut down those trees, we gotta build the canoes, we know how to sail, we'll so sail back to that big ship that's going down, we're going to take all of our kids off of that ship and we're going to sail 
to wherever it is that we need to sail to, that we want to sail to. And so we, we land on the, on the island and we head up Mauka. And then, uh, so during these 10 years, Kalamai, during these 10 years, um, we were able to create Kua Kanaka, which is a social enterprise, as Kanani mentioned, that promotes Hawaiian language values and cultural practices, tapping both ancient and 21st century technologies. We have card games like Cards for 808. We do Hawaiian language online. We do consulting, et cetera, et cetera. And we use that money that we make um, through this social enterprise to fund AI Ecoversity, which we just launched in October of 2020, which is a culturally driven higher education and career training program for young Hawaiians ages 15 to 30. At the end, I will put my email. So if you want to get a copy of this PowerPoint, I will be happy to email it to you. And just like our charters, AI Ecoversity, AI, AI Education with Aloha, is grounded in this pedagogy of Aloha, where our values, especially Aloha, are the guidelines for instruction in interpersonal relations, where the knowledge of place is the foundation of a relevant curriculum, where the revitalization of our language, our culture, our sovereignty, our sustainability is an individual and collective responsibility, where performance-based assessment or ho'ike is used as de to demonstrate contemporary and traditional rigor, and where laughter and smiling faces are the evidence of fun. And here you see three of our AI University students at our outdoor learning lab called Kiali uh, Kapapa lo io keali ikua aina that my daughter Iini will talk about in our upcoming session. Um, and it's working. So as I mentioned, we see the island, we go, we land, and we head up Mauka. And we're super excited because remember now, we, A, we're off the sinking boat, B, we have learned how to sail, and we have learned how to build canoes, and we have learned how to be sustainable, right? The main thing about AI Ecoversity is that it is completely independent. We are not a nonprofit depending on grants, and if we don't get them, we have to fold our programs. We are sustained by a thriving social enterprise that is run by Native Hawaiian, young Native Hawaiian women that are, that are the product of this Hawaiian-focused education movement, this pedagogy of Aloha movement. So we also know how to sustain ourselves financially. But in order to liberate the rest of the 50,000 that are still on the ship that is going down, we need resources. And so we head up Mauka, all excited, all happy, and we end up right here. Oops, or snappage, however you want to put it, no trespassing. Here are these koa trees, the most beautiful koa trees that you can think of that would be perfect to build our canoes, perfect for us to liberate our keiki from this sinking ship and save them, but we have no access. What do we do? Well, the good news is that just like in 1989 in Berlin, we are attacking that fence from both sides. And that's the only way that these kind of fences and walls can be brought down. They gotta be dismantled from both sides. And we're not gonna do it with violence and we're not gonna do it with anger. We're gonna do it through collaboration and working together and with aloha. But we're going and we are already dismantling this fence from both sides. And whether you look at what's behind the fence as KS property or state property or DHHL property or Queens uh, Medical Center property, it doesn't matter. Who, who it is that you think are these resources that are preventing us from that we can't get to. The main thing is that in every one of these organizations, there are people that are dismantling the fence from their side and we're coming from the other side and collectively we will bring that fence down and we will bring together those of us 
that have the skills, that have the knowledge, that have the experience to sail to Ho'okele and to liberate and to save our children and those that have the resources to help us to do so. Our beloved Queen Lili Okalani said, you must never cease to act because you fear you may fail, you know. I am one little person with a, a, a person who nobody thought, <laughs> including my own self, that I would ever make any change. You know, I was never out to make change really, but I've never <laughs> feared failure because I had nothing to lose. And I think where if we get to this place where we say, you know, what do we have to lose? Right now, our the majority of Hawaiian students are in a system that practices institutionalized racism, whether it wants to or not, that's its practice. What do we have to lose? So please act, help us act. And let's not fear about failure because there's nothing to lose and everything to gain. As early as 1997, the Native Hawaiian Education Council talked about their goal being the creation of a Hawaiian system of education that's culture-driven, family-oriented, community-based, and rigorous. And this was written in their report to Congress in 1997. It's the very first year that this Native Hawaiian Education Council was formed and wrote a report to Congress. And their number three goal was the creation of the system. What they didn't include was sustainable. We learned that over since then, that it also has to be sustainable because if it's not, it's not a viable system. So now let's talk a little bit about indigenous. Do you agree or not agree that the Native Hawaiians are indigenous peoples of Hawaii? Give me your response. Native Hawaiians, indigenous people of Hawaii, true or false? Okay, I have about 50 responses and so far everybody says true. Okay, a little bit more. I wanna make sure that I'm not off here. I'm getting a little bit more, just true or false. Uh, Native Hawaiians are the indigenous people of Hawaii. All right, we got about 75. And so far, I have, or 80, 90, let's go over 100. 100 responses, 130 responses. Okay, you guys are finally getting with the program here, my guy. Let's go for 200. All right, 200 responses that say true. I have five who are saying it's false. Okay. Now we have almost 300 that are saying true, and we still have our five that are saying it's false. So I would say based on those data, we could say, yes, the majority of us, vast, vast majority of us, agree that the Hawaiians are the indigenous peoples of Hawaii. Well, if we are, then we have rights. Rights that were granted to us under the 2007 United Nations Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. And there's all kinds of rights. I don't have time to read them. The one that I want you to focus on particularly is the right to establish and control our own educational systems and institutions, providing education in our own language in a manner appropriate to our cultural methods of teaching and learning, i.e. pedagogy of aloha. And that the states are supposed to help us with that. Uh, and the way they should do it, in my opinion, is just simply let the dollars follow the child. Since they are not educating our kids, just give us the money to educate them. And we also have in 2018, the creation of Kanai Okana that seeks to strengthen the Lahui and nurture the next generation of Aloha Aina leaders by collaboratively developing a growing Native Hawaiian system of education built on strong Olelo Hawaii and Ike Hawaii foundations. And they've been doing a fabulous job. And if you don't know about them, please check out the Ola Ka Olelo that's happening during Hawaiian Language Month. I can't speak enough about the impact already of Kanayu Kana. So we're already working on it, right? As early as 1997, it was proposed. UN declaration supports it, 
And now we have Kanayu Kana actually working on it. And interestingly, we find ourselves in the same space where the U.S. was in 1850. They had all these different, they call them disparate initiatives that had begun to show a success across the country. And their challenge was to forge an organized system of these initiatives. So same here. We have all these initiatives, all the people you're going to hear today, all over the place. And now we have to forge an organized system. And that system needs to be forged through private, public, and community partnerships. It needs to be a parallel system, not within, but parallel, side to side, same standard in terms of um, uh, quality, but decentralized, and, and studies have talked about decentralization of Hawaii school system, the DOE one, for decades. It needs to be community-based, it needs to be sustainable and grounded in our Vai Vai Kupuna so that we can again become world leaders in what I call the Pono Index. So what is the Pono Index? Well, I copied from the Happy Planet Index as far as the idea. Pono Index to me is we should be measured by our sense of honor and responsibility, which is Pono. How Pono are we as a nation? What is our quality of life? How important is our culture? How much do we value our Vai Vai Kupuna, our heritage? What's the social cohesion and the distribution of resources? Hopefully it's equitable. How do we feel, how is the trust and the felt safety in our way? How much corruption is there or lack of corruption? Um, green technology, island sustainability, and most of all happiness, that should be what we should measure ourselves against in this new parallel system of Hawaiian education. This is the index that we should be shooting for. We already have many, many, many collaborators all over the place. And if you're not on the Kalamaya, I just couldn't squeeze any more onto one slide, but I know you're there and I appreciate all of you, every single one of you that is here, the presenters, the organizers of this conference, you're all part of this collaboration already. Again, as early as 1997, this Native Hawaiian Education Council said in the long-term, culture-driven, community-based, family-oriented education is going to be the foundation upon which the Native Hawaiian people will rise, embracing Native Hawaiian self-determination through educational change. I mean, how brilliant is that? And that's been around now for decades, right? Our kupuna said pupu kahi holomua means the same thing, right? We are going to rise together. But we need to make a shift. The right side is how it's been all this time. And we need to shift to the left side. They're calling it a holacracy. You can call it anything you want. I call it the luau model. It's been around for decades, for centuries, for thousands of years, where the center of all the activity when we make a luau is that mea ho'ohanohano, whether it's the baby and who's having its first birthday, whether it's the graduate who's graduating from high school or college, whether it's the young couple who's getting married, or the kupuna who has a birthday, that person is always in the center of everything we do. And we work together collaboratively, aloha ke kahi ke kahi, malama our kuleana, kulei kanu'u, and kokua aku kokua mai. In other words, when we put on a luau, we work together in harmony. Each one of us takes care of our own kuleana, not telling anybody else what to do. We strive to reach our highest. We want to prepare the best food, the best everything for this luau, and we help each other. That is the luau model. And it doesn't matter if the auntie who makes the desserts is fooling around with a guy who's making the emu, or if the, the kupuna who makes the ake is related to the one who's doing the pule. All of those things don't matter because it's all about that mea hano hano in the center. And that's the same way. So nepotism is not an issue in our luau model. So this is the same for this Hawaiian system of education for really everybody, from womb to tomb, from the bebe all the way to the kupuna. We need to have this luau model or organization 
where communities are in charge of the instruction, the curriculum, and assessment of their keiki based on their resources. That's place-based education. And we're doing it already, but we need to have a more formal way of communities designing and controlling their own education, where we have an organ a group that provides the educational and cultural resources and training, and we have some of those already. We also already have a research and evaluation group, but we can add others to that. And we need to have a fund development that taps these resources that are currently behind the fence. And therefore, our system will be culturally driven, family oriented, and community based, and it will be world class. It's also going to be sustainable, decentralized, and green. I want to end with the words of King Liholiho, who went to England in 1824, uh, when they expected to see a savage, right? And here he is, dressed to the T, eyebrows and all, I mean, hair. Nobody can have perfect hair like that, right? And they are just blown away and they say, how can that be? You know, we, we, we expected a savage and here you are all debonair, all worldly, you know, how can that be? And he goes, duh. Who would not be wise on the path walked upon by my parents and ancestors? As long as we keep valuing these wai wai kupuna, these traditional culturally based ways of learning, and collaborate together, we can pro make sure that all Native Hawaiian learners have access to research-based, community-based, culturally-driven models of education that provide a baseline for success. If you want to know more about one of those models, this Huli here, number three, just came out. My article is called Ancient is Modern, Transforming Public Education for Hawaii. And you can download the whole book for free. Also, lots of other very awesome articles in there, um, just FYI. Our immediate need right now, you know, we've created an indigenous way of education. When I started my PhD, I had to qualify indigenous education as a field of study. Today, nobody is going to question that anymore, that it's a field of study. But what we're still questioning or what, what we're not understanding is that if we have an indigenous way of learning, now that we're in e-learning, we also need to have an indigenous way of e-learning. We can't just take some Western learning management system that's completely designed from a Western worldview that is sequential and linear and boring. We need to have our own e-learning platform, open source, culturally driven, family and affiliation oriented, easy to learn, common sense, fun and relevant that blends on and offline learning and ancient and modern technologies and design. And so if you want to help with that, please let me know. Just my last final uh, involvement. How many of you like this lesson? And I'm always a little worried when I, when I look at before I click the show responses button. So I'll give you a little bit more time. I got 90 people here. How well did you like this presentation? Is this something that you want to hear more about? If it is, then please stay tuned because you're going to have lots and lots of awesome presenters today. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. So far, nobody gives it the thumbs down, which I'm very, very happy about. So even if you disagreed, as long as you liked it, that's the main thing. Mahalo, mahalo, mahalo. I truly, truly appreciate it. And... I want to end uh, by thanking everybody, the organizers and all of you who are here. Mahalo'e Mahalo'e Kalehulehu Mahalo'e Na Makua Mahalo'e Na Kupuna Mahalo'e Na Liohawai Mahalo'e Na Aumakua Mahalo'e Na Akua Mahalo, mahalo nui to everyone for joining us today and how oli la olono ikiave ave aloha. Happy Valentine's Day, which is my favorite day of the year. Uh, if you want to contact me, me, including getting a, 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 a PowerPoint uh, slides, 
uh, just email me and I'll be happy to forward it to you. Mahalo, mahalo, ahui ho, e malama pono, have a fabulous rest of the day. Ma, Louis A. Cool for your expansive insight on the power of education with Aloha, the impact of pedagogy of Aloha, and how to execute Hawaiian culture based education with passion and perseverance and action. Let us ho'okele. What an excellent way to queue up our conference. And so please enjoy your break. Get up, walk around a little bit, move the blood, and we'll see you guys in session one. Mahalo nui loa, everyone, for your participation in our opening presentation and keynote. Aloha.